Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Seize the Vet. We're gonna be talking about little babies today with swollen joints and painful to walk for them. It needs immediate treatment, so stick around. If you wanna keep up to date with seasonal diseases that are gonna be high risk for you at any given point of year, hit the subscribe button down below so that you're not gonna miss out. Right, cheers for checking in for another episode of Says the Vet. I am Says your vet today, and today we're gonna to be talking about a super common condition called joint ill, which means joint infections in baby lambs, goats, kids, crea, calves. It is regularly treated incorrectly, and for those of you that really wanna get a good outcome, this is crucial for you to understand. So we're gonna be quickly breezing over the cause, hone in on the treatment, and then focus on prevention so it does not happen again. Okay, so as most of you know, my area of passion is your small ruminant obstetrics and neonatal cases. So there's little bubs around lambing, kidding, unpacking. I get hounded with joint ill cases all season long. So what does it look like? Well, if you're seeing it for the first week or two of life, you're probably looking at a strep infection. That's a particular type of bacteria. Could be other bacteria as well, but regardless, it's usually an infection that produces pus. So we have one or more swollen joints filled with pus. Now they do have their fluffy little kneecaps anyway in lambs, so it may be that all you notice is lameness, limping, not wanting to stand, or all round sickness if they are actually septic. So loss of appetite, going downhill. If they're a little bit older, then we can start to see other bacterial causes coming in as well, often from sharing cuts or grazes from the environment. Now these other bacteria do not necessarily cause swelling, so they can be more difficult to see from the outside. You might just notice a fever, limping, pain, and horrible arthritis down the track. But we're gonna be focusing in today on joint ill in the young babies because it's a special topic of its own in terms of treatment. Now, we do need to hit these hard and fast with heavy doses of antibiotics. If you're a farmer and you have your own on hand, you wanna be using two to three times a daily dose of penicillin or a double dose twice a day. Now this will likely go on for 10 to 14 days, so prepare yourself, okay? And the reason it's so tricky to treat is because joints are what we call a privileged site in the body. This is a site that the immune system cannot get to easily. So this is a site the bacteria can hide. Blood supply to the inside of the joint is really poor, so antibiotics just don't penetrate the joint capsule well. They don't get in there at high enough therapeutic levels, which is why we have to give our big doses to try and get enough inside the joint. You're also gonna to need to give anti-inflammatories without a doubt. Now that's gonna be your pain relief, things like meloxicam, ketoprofen. Um, these give pain relief, obviously, so an absolute must for welfare, but we also wanna get that inflammation down. I will usually be giving these for the first at least three to five days, they're painful, they need it. If the infection is not obviously improving by the end of this time, we need to change the treatment plan. So if you haven't seen a drastic improvement in five days, and we're not moving in the right direction, you need to be talking to your vet immediately. Your vet can, and I would recommend, flush the joint to remove all of that pus, and that's gonna help you massively. They can also do what's called a regional limb perfusion, where we hit the leg with a big dose of concentrated antibiotics straight to the site. Now, just to help you understand why we're hitting the infection so hard, when a young animal is first born, their bones are still made out of a lot of cartilage. It takes a little bit of time for that cartilage to harden into bone. So when we have a joint infection in a really young animal, the inflammation in there irritates and destroys the cartilaginous bones really quickly. The cartilage erodes and deforms. So in some cases, we can get to the infection and we can clear the infection, but the joint is so deformed that they're going to be arthritic and walking on glass is how I describe it, for the rest of their life. So you can clear that infection and end up euthanizing anyway. All right, so that's why it's really important to get there in the first day or two, as soon as you notice this. Now a word on prevention, the cause almost always lies in a lack of colostrum. Colostrum is the first milk that mum produces, it's a golden kind of color, and all the goody immune cells are in there. So bub has to drink a big full belly of colostrum from mum, ideally in the first few hours, six to eight hours really. After that, the gut starts to shut down and not absorb the colostrum as well. By 24 hours, it's not absorbing anything, so it's pointless after that time. So it really is the earlier the better, and the first two to four hours is ideal. 
which means that if a little one's born in a storm, has a problem birthing, is particularly small or weak, maybe a little bit premature, or it doesn't stand quickly enough for whatever reason to drink, he's not gonna be getting a strong immune system. Of course, if mum doesn't have a lot of colostrum to give, then we run into the same issue. So if she's unwell, if she doesn't let her milk down, if she's got pregnancy ketosis, for example, and isn't producing milk, then we're gonna have the same issues with bud being prone to all these infections. Often infection just gets them through the navel, through that belly button. It's a wet umbilical cord and it just drags in bacteria from the environment. So you need to be super observant. Make sure if there are any struggling lambs, kids, create, you get out there ASAP, tube them with colostrum if they're not drinking on their own. You can spray the damp umbilical belly button with iodine as well. That's something you absolutely should do to prevent infection from tracking up there. Now, depending if you have a dedicated ruminant vet available to you, your vet may be able to perform what's called a plasma transfusion. Now this is where we take immune cells from the blood of a healthy adult animal, ideally mum, and give it straight into the bloodstream of your little one. So you're bypassing that, that colostrum altogether and giving it straight into the bloodstream. Otherwise, if they miss the boat, you may well end up with a bub that's on antibiotics and sick on and off for the first couple of months of life while he learns to develop his own immune system. So those are our options. Prevention is of course the way to go as with everything. But if you've got a joint ill case, get there quickly high doses of at least daily penicillin and a visit to the vet for flushing of the joint, regional lymph effusions, and if you have a vet that can offer you a plasma transfusion, that's the way to go. All right, all the best for a very happy and healthy springtime period and I will see you next time for another episode of Says the Vet. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, jump over to the YouTube channel directly and ask questions there, start discussion there, that way I'll be able to see it and help you out. Okay guys, I will see you next time. Thumbs up, share if you found it helpful and uh, we'll see you for the next episode. Bye-bye.